In this tutorial, we are going to cover the full oscillator section. And so to get over to that, you can click on this little pencil icon on the side here, and it's going to reveal to you the oscillator editor. It looks a little bit intimidating at first, but it's actually pretty straightforward once we start breaking it down step by step. So we're gonna break this down into sections. So first we have this oscillator editor right here, and you can see this sort of graph. And you might notice that some of these options are available in the main sort of window. What this oscillator editor is essentially allowing you to do is to fine tune the waveforms that you create. So you kind of have this quick editing version, and then you have this more in-depth uh, version with a lot of tools and a lot of ways that you can sort of manipulate and shape the waveform. You also have access to the MS CG editor, which you can just click like that and you can adjust those parameters as well in a more in-depth way. Going back to the oscillator, we can pretty much break down this into parts. So you have this main editor window right here where you can draw in and you can click and just like you can in the main window, you can make your own little wavetable. And on the side here, this is what really sets it apart is if you go to the left, you can see these different tool options. And so we can actually break this down into three parts. So you have the shapes section, you have the edit section, and then you also have the morph section. So starting with the shape tools, this whole entire thing is called the toolbox. And so we're starting with the little stamper here. Those are the shape tools. And the first one you have here is the harmonic grid. So what the harmonic grid does is it replaces the original grid into a sort of like harmonic grid. It kind of gives you more guides. The stronger lines are the harmonics. So if I actually take it off, you can see the regular grid. And if you notice these strong lines here, those represent the harmonics. And they're at 2, 4, 8, 16, 32. It goes all the way up to 512. And then next to that, you have this sort of X, Y grid. And this, you can either use your scroll wheel or you can click and drag. And this will allow you to adjust the grid even more. You can add more vertical lines, more horizontal lines, depending on what you're trying to do. You have a flip X option here. And what this does is it's going to uh, flip these shapes at the bottom here. And then you have the flip, it's going to flip them horizontally. Then you have the flip Y and that's gonna flip them vertically. And you also have an auto flip, which is gonna auto flip the curve and it just depends on the direction that you're drawing. On the bottom here, you have a total of 12 shapes. And so you can select the shape that you want and you can sort of use it as like a brush. And by default, all these shapes are unflipped. So say you want like a square type shape, as you can see, you just kind of click drag, you can, or you can create these little uh, steps. You also have this icon with a Y and a little cursor. That is your grid move, and that's going to allow you to click and swipe to the left or right, and then vertically kind of shift whatever's highlighted. You also have a grid step. You can click and swipe left or right to draw horizontal lines as well. So you can see this kind of does it horizontally. Moving on to the drawing tools, which is this pencil icon right here. And it's somewhat similar. You have the harmonic grid. You have your grid XY. And here you also have a grid snap, which essentially makes the grid lines magnetic. So next to the grid snap, you have the squeeze trim stop function. So if we start with the squish right here, what the squish does is it essentially compresses the selection when it reaches the edges of the editor, be it left, right, top, or bottom. And so one thing to note is that the new form is permanent when you release the mouse button. After that, you have the keep shape option, and that ensures that the shape and size of the selection is going to remain intact whenever it reaches the left or the right. You have keep order. So it's this little lock with the one, two, three. The keep order is similar to the keep shape, but it's only constrained by the neighboring points. And then lastly, you also have this envelope mode, which is similar to keep order. But the difference here is that the movement to the right compresses or expands everything to the right of the selection. Under that, you have a guide selector. So the guides are off, as you can see here, but you can also change them to one. And so if you change it to one, you'll notice that it's color coded in blue. If you were to uh, go to guide two, you have this green option. So you can kind of see here. This is just to help you edit your sounds. You also have the guide three, which is a salmon color. And then when you want to go back to the regular curve editing, you can turn the guides off. Alternatively, you could also press G on the keyboard. 
to cycle through. And when you click it off and on, you can see here you have your guides. And then you could turn it off if you don't want it. Under that, you have this kind of bow shaped icon. That is your curvature selector. If you click on the arrow, you're given some different options. You have the L option, which is the bow shape by default. You also have an S option, which is a bi-directional curve. You also have this L pointy option, which is similar to L, but is going to have more of a distinct knee as the guide puts it. Then you have a L sharp, which L sharp is gonna be similar to the L, but uh, approaches the endpoints horizontally or vertically. And then you have your S sharp, which is gonna be similar to S, but it approaches the endpoints horizontally or vertically. Next to that, you have this little, you have a cursor icon with the X, Y, and that's gonna allow you to move your X, Y movement in any direction. So you can move X, and then you have different options. So if you wanted to just move, it's only gonna allow for a horizontal movement. So if you see here, I can't move it up or down. I can only go to the side. And if we did say move Y, it could only go uh, up and down and won't be able to move to the side. Hopefully I did not mess that up, but if that makes sense. One goes up and down, and then the X, if you just want it to move to the side, you could just move to the side. Then you have your selection modes, which is this little, you have this box with a little cross cursor. So it'll only select the points within a drawn box. And then your H select is going to be like a horizontal select. So it's gonna include all the points in the Y axis. Then you have this little handles icon. It's gonna reveal the spline handles of each selection for more detailed editing. So when that's enabled, you can kind of see here that you can really kind of, uh, this really reminds, it's kind of like the pen tool in Illustrator or Photoshop. And you can really kind of adjust the curves and under that you have your arrow and it's sort of a multi-purpose tool it allows you to swipe to select points you could double click to add points you can uh, click and drag points then you have your add points and that's just like a dedicated tool so like clicking in the background is just going to add points you have your point split right here is next to that and the point split so you can see kind of looks pretty cool you can do some more stuff Essentially, once you click and drag upwards, it'll insert a horizontal segment. And so it's also compressing the other points in order to make room. So as you can see here, it kind of creates like some space, but it's also kind of smashing the points on the side. So it's compressing those. You also have a paint option, which is like a paintbrush tool. And that's like your freehand. So if you want to just like go crazy, you can sort of just draw like a freehand it. Then uh, you have your scale. Okay, now under that, there's this manipulate section. And we're starting with the this icon. I, I don't know, it kind of looks like a 3D box with a cursor on it. That one um, is your scale resize. So you can, uh, so to scale a selection horizontally, you're going to click and drag either at its leftmost or rightmost point. And then if you want to do some vertical scaling, you can click and drag here at the lowest or highest point in a selection. Next to that, you have your uh, multiply, and that is going to repeat a selection to the left via click or drag on its leftmost points or repeat to the right via click and drag on its rightmost points. So whatever direction you'd like, you can essentially repeat that. Next to that, we have the warp options, and you have some different options as you could see any icon that essentially has this little arrow on the bottom is going to give you some more options so you have by default is your warp linear and the warp linear is gonna just warps the curve linearly it warps the curve or selection by just clicking and drag you have your warp expo which is the same but works in an exponential and then you have a cubic which is the same but works uh, in a cubic way you have this other icon which is like a box it looks kind of like a little it looks kind of like the editor with the waveform in it and that one is your rotate and that's going to rotate the phase of the curve by clicking and dragging on a point then you have this little bow shape again that's your expo form this one is kind of similar to the l curvature that we were explaining before here's where it gets a little uh, technical but it approximates an exponential segment across multiple points the more points in the selection the more closely the result is going to resemble a proper exponential curve this one's one you might want to experiment with 
but um, by messing along with it, you kind of get an idea for kind of what each of these tools do and why you might want to use them as you're designing your sound. And next to that, you have a handle rotate. And what that does is by clicking on a single point, it can reset its spline handles to a straight line. So sometimes you might want to do that if you want things less curved. And then um, under that, you have the selection and you might see these different options here. These are your move selection options. So you could see it's adjusting the selection either to the left or the right by I'm clicking on them. You can also rotate them as well. You can also move them as well with these two buttons right here, depending on left or right. So this just adjusts your selection to really get more fine tune. If it's something that you can't click and drag, you can just actually uh, select the point directly. Then under properties, you have this close shape, close the shape either to the left or right. So you can see here, it's sort of closing off the shape. And what they're essentially doing is creating either the first point that aligns vertically with the final point. And then you can create a final point that aligns vertically with the first point. So moving over to our morph tools, we have this really cool sort of like uh, visual representation here. So the first aspect to understanding the morph tools is your morph vector. So you can click on any point except for the first and the last and uh, drag away to reposition the source point for the morph calculation. So this is only going to work with the two closest morph types. And so you have different morph types under here in this transition. You have crossfade, which is the default option, and that's no morphing. It's just going to give you like a simple crossfade. But then you can go point by point, and that's going to connect the points by index. You're also, you have your closest X, so it's going to connect each point by its proximity uh, within the X axis. You also have that for the X and Y as well. And lastly, you have peaks and valleys. And what peaks and valleys does is it's going to connect the peaks to peaks and valleys to valleys. You also have this ease in and out, which kind of looks like the grid adjustment thing where you can sort of either uh, use your scroll wheel or you can click and drag as well. And as you could see, see the out sort of curving and then the in I mean, what these are doing is essentially letting you specify how smoothly the morph approaches each member of the pair. The guide even gives you a example in which you can load uh, plopsies. You can mess around with this and it should help you kind of understand this a little bit more. I highly suggest it's page 35 of the official guide to check that out to really get more of an in-depth understanding because I know a lot of this is very technical. It'll give you more of a uh, tangible like connection to how it all works. Okay, so with curves, you can also transfer curves and there's different ways you can do that. You can copy and paste uh, scalable vector graphics or SVGs, I talked about that in the previous video. And you can also export the wave and you can also import them by dragging and dropping. This kind of gives you an idea of how you can um, essentially adjust the the tolerance and the max points because a lot of wave tables might have a lot of complex information one of the things to note is that it might cause some problems with the beta version right now where it could stall or even uh, crash the plugin so uh, just proceed with caution essentially always make sure you save and you know all that stuff the guide is still being worked on but you do have some different options like optimize ends optimize phase and then reticular as well and so as this synth be continues to update there'll be more information on that so i highly suggest just going back to this guide that i have linked in the description this is going to be sort of that foundation that um, you can always go back to now within the context menu of the full oscillator editor you are given some extra options when you right click you you have some extra ones from the the basic oscillator editor and i have those down below this is on page 38 of the guide and you have a map Max 2 option, which uh, the guide sets maximum values for each handle in the curve. The number of points are retained, and you have a min 2, which is going to set the minimum value for each handle in the curve, and uh, the points are retained as well. And then you have a scale below. That curve is going to be a scaled below guide, and it's going to add new points whenever it needs to. And the same thing with the scale above. It's going to um, scale above the guide, and then uh, it'll also add points when necessary. 
necessary. We have a cut above, which essentially um, everything above the guide is cut. It can add points based off where you want to cut. And then you have a cut below, which is going to do the same thing, but below wherever you want to designate it. You also have a print too, which is going to copy the guide to the curve and it is going to replace the original. And uh, something that the guide notes is that um, if the guide is unselected via click on its thumbnail in the toolbox, um, the roles the roles of the guide and curve are reversed and so that basically covers this full oscillator section i know this one was a bit technical there's not really any audio examples for this one this was more kind of showing you how to you what each tool does and how the guide uh, how you can sort of draw on these waveforms in the next video we are going to be going over the oscillator effects section so stay posted for that one um i thank you so much for watching i hope this was helpful until next time